Hello everybody, welcome to Totally Tabled, my name is Shaggy, and today I just want to give you my quick first impressions of Bot Factory. I just did a full solo playthrough of Bot Factory, please go check that out, because like always, when I do one of these, I assume that you've watched that and you know how to play. Now I want to be clear, when I say first impressions, I really mean it this time. I have only played this a handful of times solo. I have not even touched the multiplayer game yet, so please keep that in mind as you listen to me ramble. I am talking about the solo game specifically, although I'm very, very eager to try this multiplayer and hope to do so very soon. Now, I was very intrigued by Bot Factory because I heard it was sort of a Kanban light. <laughs> you know, my little Kanban or uh, my first Kanban. And it's actually not that at all. I <laughs> Let's be clear, this is not a game for kids. Uh, this isn't even a particularly light game. I'd call this a medium weight Euro that plays lightning fast. Even with four players, this should probably come in around an hour at most. Very quick playing, but there are a bunch of rules. However, compared to Kanban, which is an incredibly complicated game, uh, I've done a full playthrough of it, so you should go check that out if you haven't. The idea of trying to <laughs> strip that down to a medium weight experience um, seemed like an interesting design challenge uh, and was pretty intriguing to see if that would actually work. And the number one thing that I hope that they had retained from the original Kanban was that action selection worker placement system. I talk about it in depth in my top 10 worker placement games list, so you should go check that out if you haven't. But the idea of having these different actions in a line, and the first thing you do is from left to right in this case, you get to wake up your worker and move them to a new spot. And then once everyone's done that, you go back from left to right and, and you activate the actions in that order. So it's this two-step process. And since there are very few action spaces to move your one worker around, it gets very tight and you're constantly getting each other's way. And there's this cool sort of timing element that comes into it that adds so much strategy and angst and... It's one of the most brilliant worker placement systems. And I was just hoping, hoping if you're going to do a Kanban light, you got to keep that system. And fortunately, Bot Factory keeps that. It is intact. It's here. It's basically the same. So I was really happy to see that that was in this game. The other thing I was hoping that they'd retain from the original Kanban was Sandra. In Kanban, she plays your boss and she is moving around and like judging you, making you lose points if you don't meet her ridiculous demands. It's this great thematic touch where you're trying to stay one step ahead of her and make sure that you're well trained in, in these different departments so she won't judge you. And then there's this whole phase where you're, you're going to a meeting and you're trying to impress her with the things that you've accomplished and that's how you score points. It's so wonderful and... Thankfully, Sandra is here in Bot Factory as well. In fact, it's literally the same character. There's a whole story in the beginning of the rule book where she's now come over to the Bot Factory as a consultant. It's literally the same meeple, so it's uh, that's really cool. Anyone who's a fan of Kanban will love to see that. Now, I will have to say there's a little bit of a disappointment with Sandra in that she's not nearly as mean in Bot Factory as she is in Kanban. Now, to be fair, you can play Kanban where you have quote-unquote nice Sandra rather than mean Sandra. Uh, you should never play with nice Sandra. You should always play with mean Sandra, in my opinion. But here we have a little bit of nicer Sandra. She's not moving around, judging you, making you lose points. The only really mean thing that she does is occasionally maybe take a spot that you want. But then also, if you ever end up in her same location, and that is a thing in the, in, you know, just like in Kanban in a one and two player game, you can't move your meeple to the same department as Sandra is in, but she can move into your department. And if you ever end up in the same department, you have to spend one of those speech tokens in order to take your action. That's the only mean thing she really does. Other than that, she's just kind of refreshing tiles and, and, and doing things like that. So Sandra doesn't quite have the same feel here as she does in, in regular Kanban. But regardless, it's nice to see her here. Other than that, you have this vague sort of idea of getting blueprints or needing certain parts, using those parts as sort of an assembly line to create the thing that you have on your project. 
you have a very simplified and streamlined system of getting parts and plans and making things. So I would say overall, just from a design perspective, the challenge of trying to create a lighter game that still feels like a younger brother or sister of Kanban, I, I think they knocked that out of the park. And I find that exciting because there's definite gaming groups that I have where I would not introduce regular Kanban. It would just be too much, too heavy, take too long, uh, be too involved of a teach. But I could absolutely see bringing Bot Factory out and teaching it and, and playing it in an hour and that being a great time. For me, that's perfect because I love Kanban and having a game that has some of those, you know, mechanisms that I like in Kanban, but I can play it with more groups. That's cool. That's something that I'm happy to have in my collection. Now, does it in any way, shape, or form live up to the heights of Kanban for me? Or give me those same feelings? Not at all. Is it a really fun game? Yes. I really think it's a fun game, but this is definitely not like a replacement in any way for Kanban for me. But if you found Kanban to just be way too much, overwrought, too many mechanisms, too much to think about, then I would absolutely recommend giving Bot Factory a try. This might be way more, you know, up your alley. And honestly, when we talk about the solo modes between those two games, there's a huge difference. The solo mode here in Bot Factory is incredibly streamlined and simple, which is the exact opposite of the Kanban solo mode. This playing Kanban, and, and really I'm talking about Kanban EV, the, the new version of Kanban. That's the one that introduced a solo mode. That takes an already complicated game and makes it, you know, maybe not quite double as complex, but extremely, extremely complex. Long and heavy, a lot of going on, a lot of, of managing of your solo opponent's turn. In stark contrast here in Bot Factory, managing Sandra and the factory inspector is so simple and so fast. For a lot of people, it's going to be too simple. And I think that's kind of where I'm coming down to. As a solo game, I enjoy it as a quick little puzzle, but I don't think that there's really enough here to recommend this as a solo only game. I don't think there's enough replayability. Now there is a little. These different goals that you have, there's only four of them, but they radically change how you have to approach, you know, going through the game. But ultimately, I just don't think there's quite enough but I have to say, I am really excited to play this at three and four. I really think that's where this game is going to shine. In fact, I'm really looking forward to four players. I think the tension there will be fantastic. That's what I want from Kanban. I want this turn angst. I want people in my way constantly. I want that feeling of like this tight dance on those worker placement spots. These solo bots aren't really able to give you that feeling but real players will. So I'm definitely keeping this one for that multiplayer play. And it will occasionally come out solo. Pretty good, fun for a little bit, a few plays in there. But honestly, once I get to the table for multiplayer, I can see how it'll just work so much better. I'm almost positive, but again, to be clear, I haven't tried it yet. But there you go, those are my first impressions. Honestly, it doesn't matter what I think. Watch the playthrough and you'll get everything that you need to know. That's the beautiful thing about a playthrough. You can form your own opinions just based on the play itself. Also, if you've played this, let us know what you think. Maybe you think it's a great solo game and you would highly recommend it. Let people know. And if you enjoy the channel and you enjoy these videos, please subscribe. Do all the good stuff. You know what to do. But until next time, thank you so much for watching and goodbye.